Welcome back, Collective. I'm back with another message for you. Let's go ahead and pray and we'll get straight into it. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. In the name of Jesus, we pray. We honor you and love you, Lord. Amen. Okay. Let's go ahead and get straight into your message. So... Basically, what I have here, um, and Holy Spirit, I pray that you would lead me and guide me, speaking the words exactly from our Heavenly Father's lips, in the name of Jesus. So, the Lord really loves you. For So, number one, um, I want to just encourage you, and I want to give you a reminder that you are so honored, you are so loved by the Lord Jesus. He loves you. Um, if you are someone that is single, you don't necessarily have to be, it's like there's things that you do where you pull on him in the spirit. When you are in the Holy Spirit, when you, um, are in prayer or when you are in worship, or there's things that you do that really draw his attention towards you, you pull on him. So if you felt like, you know, it was just you honoring the Lord and giving your worship and you didn't necessarily know if you had his attention or if there was this, um, <clears throat> you know, if his eyes were not necessarily just fixed directly on you, they are. <clears throat> there is literally a fragrance that goes up from you in a, in a place of worship and praise Whatever it is that you're doing, if it's prayer, if it's singing, if it's worship, if you are meditating on the word of the Lord, there is literally divine assistance and you have, you have the Lord's eyes on you. So that's number one, right? Um, it's like you have his heart. So I just want to tell you that and just encourage you in case that's something that you want, you needed to hear. Um, but additionally, there's somebody here that sees this glow on you. Um, the fact that, you know, we've all been bought with a price. That's one thing. But when the eyes of the Lord are on you and there's literally something about you where, you know, someone can literally take a glance at you or, um, you know, like, they they have they sense this aura or this sweet fragrance that is has gone up into heaven this is something that is really captivating for others as well and there's someone in particular that you have been beneficial to their life to the point where you have helped them to step outside of doing things in the wrong way it's like you have really um, whether you have like intentionally said something to bring, you know, correctness in their life, it doesn't have to be, but there's something that you've done that has. So here, my brothers and sisters, if one of you should wander from the truth and someone should bring them back, remember this, whoever turns a sinner from the way of error will save them for, from death and cover a multitude of sins. James 5, 19 and 20, 19 through 20. Someone feels like it, it wasn't something that was expected. It's like you came out of nowhere with this healing power, with this ability to bring them back from, you know, um, to, you know, like assisting them to be drawn out of darkness and into God's marvelous light. 
And the fact that you're able to really be a benefit to the body of Christ and that you are allowing the Lord to use you, you know, this not only saves someone from feeling dead and, you know, not alive in the body of Christ or acknowledging that, you know, they're possibly a dead man walking, like, you know, really illuminating to them. This is covering a multitude of sins for this person, but, um, you know, like God is covering their sins, right? The same way he's given us grace and covered our sins. But it's something about whatever you could have done previously, whatever this person thought about you previously, if you had um, done something wrong, you know, like you're standing in a space and you're being presented as someone that has been saved and you are giving that, like the love that's been given to you freely, you are also giving that love freely. The grace that has been given to you freely, you're also giving that grace freely. This is perpetuating in the body of Christ. And this is someone who is like, they don't feel any, you know, like any, um, negative emotions or whatever towards you. It's like your sins, as far as they are concerned, any wrongdoing or any misdeed or any remembrance of whatever, that's all done and, and gone away. And this is a beautiful thing. This is why there's so much blessing in. It's like if you save a soul, you save a life and cover a multitude of sins. And it's not just for them, it's for you as well. Um spiritually and then with you know, with man naturally. And this is leading somebody. It's like somebody wants to confess something. They want to confess something. They want to heal something. The Lord is really pressing them to confess a fault. Um, Like I said, they have been illuminated. They see things in a very different way. And this is because of your prayers. You have been praying and it is, it's availing. You know, like the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man or of a righteous man availeth much. You have been victorious in prayer. And now somebody is realizing that they can't live in the body of Christ and be dead in their spirit. The same way you can't have faith without works. So whatever it is that they are being led and guided to do by the Holy Spirit, this is really pressing this person because they're supposed to do this. They are acknowledging that they need to do this if they want to live a life free from the law of sin and death. If there's something that the Lord has told them to do, to confess a fault to release something, to realize that prayer works, that we're supposed to be praying for one another, that there's healing that will come from this. This really has somebody shook. Whatever whatever it is, it, it's like God is putting a, a certain level of panic on this person because they know that they have to do this. But additionally, they don't want you to see them as, you know, like, they don't want you to laugh or to make fun of them or to gloat or to rejoice at whatever this confession is. They're, they're concerned about this. But that's not even where you are. That's not who you are and that's not where you are. You know why? Then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I will be with you. And then there was more, but I didn't have the space. Basically, his spirit will never depart from us. He'll always be with us. So it's like God wants to bring reassurance to you and whomever this person is, it's like, you're not going to gloat over them. You're not interested. Even if there was something in this person where there was still some level of dissension or whatever it is that was here, 
or whatever it is that they need to confess this fault that makes them feel, you know, like they're inactive in the body of Christ or they're dead in their spirit or something like that, where they're not going to be able to produce or they're not going to be able to do whatever. You're not going to laugh at them because you have been called and chosen to create disciples in the kingdom of God. So it's like them coming to the understanding that your calling and your mission is so much greater. You're actually, you're, you, you're walking worthy of the vocation and where you have been called. And it's like, either they're seeing this now, or they're going to see this, that you're more interested in making disciples for the kingdom then you are about winning any type of personal battle or interest or holding some type of, you know, you're not going to rejoice over anybody falling. You know why? Because when an evil spirit comes out of anyone, it goes through dry and arid places, like it's seeking rest and finding none. And then it'll say, oh, let me return back to that house, which they left. And then when they get there, if they find that it's unoccupied and it's clean and all put together and everything, it'll go and take seven more spirits more wicked than itself. And that person in this, the final condition of that person will be even worse than the beginning. So let's go back for a second. Someone is really you know, like they're smitten with you because of this healing and this deliverance that you've brought them, right? But them resisting this additional step or these solidifying things that, that really need to happen, this faith, they need to put, I'm sorry, the works to put with their faith. They believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. They believe that they're saved. They believe in everything. Okay, there is a spirit that is gone from this person. But God called you to make disciples because you know that the condition of this person will be way worse than the beginning of it was. Does that make sense? You know that it's like if a person is delivered, if you saved a sinner from error, if you saved them from going down the wrong path, from doing things that are not right, and you've covered a multitude of sins, and you know, it's like you're not going to gloat over them. You're not going to see them as your enemy. We have one enemy, and that is the accuser of the brethren, Satan himself. We are servants and we are disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he has all authority in heaven and on earth. And he has given this to us so that we can make disciples for the kingdom. That way we can teach. That way we can put life into a person. Or we can assist them. So that it doesn't just stop with them being saved and delivered from, you know, one stronghold or one spirit or whatever. And then everything is left and things just become worse than they are. No, God wants us to stay in position so that people are renewed in their strength. Hang on, let me look at this. Yeah. Somebody still feels like there's some type of difference here between you and them or something. It's because they need to put works with their faith. Whatever it is that the Lord told them to do, they need to do it. Because this is somebody that feels like, but, you know, you've been renewed in your strength. You, you know, soar on the wings like eagles. You've been able to run and not grow weary. You've been able to walk and not faint. And we, we all know this is because collective, you are like clay in God's hands. And this is how God wants all of us to be willing to, you know, be the clay easily, easily molded. 
willing to change based on what the Lord is, is needing from us. You're being guided to pray. You're being guided to pray for those that are in the midst of their transformation. You're being guided to really, you know, cry out, even for those that may think that you are, you know, like if they stumble or if you find out something or if they confess their faults or if they ask you to pray for them or something like that that you might think it's funny or they're insecure about something with that. Collective, you're being guided to pray that people would see your good works and glorify your father in heaven, that you would be able to save and turn someone away from sin or doing something wrong. And, and cover a multitude of sins. Pray that the Lord is not angry with whoever it is. If there's something that they need to confess or there was something that they did to wrong you or whatever it is that they want to confess or admit, just pray that the Lord would not be angry beyond measure and not remember our sins, all of us, as the body of Christ. Because we're all God's people. Pray additionally that you would stand in a space where you don't find fault with your brother or your sister in Christ. Because this is someone that it's like, for the living know that they will die, but the dead know nothing. They have no further reward, and even their name is forgotten. Their love, their hate, and their jealousy have long since vanished. Never again will they have a part of anything that happens under the sun. Ecclesiastics 9, 5, and 6. See, he is puffed up. His desires are not upright, but the righteous will live by faithfulness. Indeed, wine betrays him. He is arrogant and never at rest because he is as greedy as the grave and like death is never satisfied. He gathers to himself all the nations and takes captive all the people. To be in this space, for this person to not put their works with their faith, to not confess their fault, it's like this is someone that feels like they love you. You've captivated their heart, and this is just out of nowhere. But this could be someone that, you know, the drinking has betrayed them. Drinking has caused them to be puffed puffed up or to have desires that are not right. You know, um, even if someone is holding you captive, if you feel bound spiritually, mentally, physically, emotionally, this has something to do with greed and this person just never being satisfied. But what you know is there's no further reward for for dead works, for someone that is not alive and active in the body of Christ. Because there is only one lawgiver and judge, the one who is able to save and destroy. 
But the Bible says, who are you to judge your neighbor? Jesus said, I am not possessed by a demon, said Jesus, but I honor my father and you dishonor me. This is somebody that, you know, it's like they could have been someone that gets drunk. And it's like wanting to hold you hostage, afraid to confess something, afraid to admit something. But your prayers are effective. Your prayers are effective and they are availing. This person knows that you're not possessed by a demon. They know that you honor your heavenly father. And whatever it was that was done brought dishonor to you. At the end of the day, even with whatever was done, it's like God's works and God's might has just been displayed within you. This is someone that feels like, you know, they tried to cheer themselves up with, with wine, with alcohol, with the ways of the world. But God's wisdom is still there. There's this disconnect within this person. And this is why the Lord and the Holy Spirit is saying, you have to pray for them. You know who it is within your spirit. If you have, you know, like if you have been a righteous witness to someone. You have literally brought them out. Of, you've brought them back. This goes beyond what must I do to be saved or for them to say, what must I do to be saved? This is them literally being saved by the Holy Spirit. And they need to continue to see your example. That you are here to do the work of the Lord. You're here to make disciples. You're here to speak the truth of God. You don't want to see this person end up in a worse condition than when they started, because this is somebody that is like whatever the alcohol or the influence from whatever, it just goes beyond anything that they can control. They thought that embracing this kind of foolishness or, you know, cheering themselves up or this was going to make them happy. This could be someone in the past before they really came to Christ you know, like they thought that they needed to be drunk to have fun. They needed to be drunk to be more casual or to, you know, do this or that, or it just becomes like habitual. And they're trying to find some type of happy experience in life. This, this wine, this drinking of wine, this over access in alcohol, is, it's betraying them. It's not making them happy. It's not bringing them a cheerful spirit. It's not, you know, it, it's definitely not going to put on them the oil of joy in the garment of praise. This is like the cloak of heaviness. This is arrogance and things that are leading them down the wrong path. And they need a transformation. Because it's like, if this person, you know, like this is someone that's in the body of Christ. But they know that if they are dead in the body, there's nothing good that they're going to be able to produce. There's no reward. There's nothing further for them. They took a position of judgment over you. They wanted to say that, you know, like they wanted to enforce some type of punishment on you or law on you. They wanted to judge you. This is someone that could have said you possessed, you're this, you're that. And they dishonored you. And it's like, just the Lord has just been showing himself more and more faithful in you. 
The king will reply, truly, I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. So let's put it in your, let's put it, you know, let's put the ball in your court, collective. The same way Jesus didn't come to be served, he came to serve. The same way our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ came for the sinner and those that are sick that need to be healed. Let's do unto them how we would like them to do unto us. Let's show the love of Christ. Even if we consider them in our life or in whatever realm this is for you, whatever aspect this is, it doesn't matter who they are or what they've done. Let's do good things onto them to show them a godly example because what they've learned from the world has literally betrayed them. They've embraced foolishness and God's wisdom is still trying to guide them. They need to see that we're not here to hurt one another. We've made it up in our mind that we're not going to be a stumbling block to our brothers and sisters in the faith, but we're going to pray for them and we're going to continue to fight the good fight of faith. Because the love of Christ is patient, it's kind, it's not envy, it's not boastful or proud. It's not for us to be so seeking or to keeping any record of wrong, nor is it for us to rejoice in our hearts if, uh, if those that have made us enemies stumble or fall. We rejoice in the truth. We trust the Lord, we hope in the Lord, and we know that our hope will never put us to shame. So I have here, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. James 1, 2, and 3. Okay, so thank you, Holy Spirit. So I'm being led to tell you, number one, you've been really going through it. You've been put through the ringer. And I want to not only affirm the, the, the love that the Lord has for you, how you pull on him and how he looks upon you and he loves you. You send up a, a sweet fragrance to him. Do not blame yourself for the things that you've been going through. Don't get discouraged. It's not, you haven't been going through these things to be discouraged or turned away. You've been going through these things to set a godly example of how it's done and how you stay strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. The Bible says, when having done all to stand, stand therefore. This is not to blame you. This is not to blame your parents. This is not to blame your children. This is not to blame aunties, uncles, cousins, in-laws, ex-associates, colleagues, whomever. You don't blame anyone. You remember that everything that is happening to you is so that the works of God can be displayed through you. Okay? Okay? So this is why the Lord is saying, when you face these kind of trials, when you go through test after test after test, this is when you show and you display exactly what it looks like to stay saved. How that looks when trials happen, when bad things happen to you, 
when you're being falsely accused, when people are coming against your integrity, and your righteousness, when people want to throw rocks at you and shame you, when everything is taken away from you, when you're pointed at and laughed at, when justice has been slow to come, you are supposed to stay slow to anger. You're supposed to stay faithful. You are supposed to show the example of what it looks like when you put faith with your with works with your faith. You're supposed to be the example to those that need to be turned away from error, that need to be saved from death. Because we're free from the law of sin and death. We have life in Christ Jesus. You have to show that godly example of what it looks like to still walk out preserved, clean, pure. You're not, you haven't rotten. You didn't go rotten. You didn't, you're not spoiled and you're not going to come out all icky and nasty and And this is helping them. This is helping whoever it is that recognizes now they have no, they had no right to judge you. There's only one lawmaker and there's only one judge. He's able to save our lives or destroy them. He's able to bring us, lift us up or bring us low. Seeing your perseverance, seeing that you are resisting the devil and he's fleeing, seeing that you are staying strong in God and you're able to bend and move with the way that he wants you to go, that you're like clay. You will let him change you, reform you, reshape you. You're not, you don't resist any of that. This is a godly example Is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. James 5, 13 and 14. You are that walking example. Ironically, they've witnessed all of these things within your life whether it was caused by their hand or their doing or whatever it is, the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man availeth much. You know how? By following the word of God and staying within the Lord, keeping on the full armor of God. This is someone, it's like the Lord wants you re to remember that how you treat the 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 lesser of anyone, if you see someone and you feel like they're the least of this or they're not great or they're not this or they did this or they did that, how you treat the least of the people that believe on him, even if they believe just a little bit, if they don't have the the type of faith to put works to it or whatever the case is, you're still accountable for your own behavior. You show kindness, you show love, you show honor. Show that you are not self-seeking. Show that you're not easily angered because you are rooted and grounded in love. You are in Christ. Show them that, yes, indeed, the wine, the drinking, the greediness, all of these things, holding others captive, all of this is arrogance and it's folly. It's all betrayed them. There's no satisfaction in that. There's nothing upright in it. But you are the example to them where it's like, if you have been in trouble, you pray. When you're happy, you sing songs of praise. When you're sick or if there's anyone around you that's sick, you anoint them, you get the oil. You get the blessed oil and you anoint them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you're showing them this. You are being this godly example. So I'm going to leave this one here. Just a reminder. You know, 
in order for you to really show that you're not going to do anything to hurt anyone that's come to the body of Christ to be healed and set free and delivered. But you've come to do the work of the Lord and to create disciples. And if you didn't know that you were doing this, now this is being brought to your attention. You're turning people away from sin. You're saving them from death. And you're covering a multitude. This covers a multitude of sins. Okay. I hope that this helps. Like, share, subscribe. Love you. Bye.